Okay, so we talked about intrinsic regulation of GFR. GFR stands for glomerular filtration rate and how there's two mechanisms and these are demonstrated right here. And we're here, we're specifically talking about if there is low blood pressure. So low blood pressure means that your, uh, your um, probably you don't have a high enough hydrostatic pressure. So it's not forcing enough fluid out of the glomerulus and into the tubules. So if your blood pressure in your afferent arterioles is low, then it could cause vasodilation of the afferent arterioles, so more blood flows into the glomerulus. And this is actually going to increase your GFR. We could also have, if um, there is like not enough sodium chloride or salt in your filtrate, um, then you could also have vasodilation of the afferent arterioles, and that is also going to um, increase GFR. So like also if there's, so remember the uh, macula densa cells of the juxtaglomerular apparatus detect levels of uh, sodium chloride in the blood. So those are both intrinsic. So let's talk about an extrinsic mechanisms. So extrinsic mechanisms mean generally outside of the organ or like distance from the organ. Um, this can be the case, but um, we're also gonna talk about um, the granular cells, which are also in the kidney. So one thing about the extrinsic regulation would be the sympathetic nervous system. So this is part of your autonomic division. So the sympathetic um, nervous system is your fight or flight. And it is also what is responsible for innervating blood, blood vessels and keeping them at like a partial contraction. So the parasympathetic nervous system actually does not innervate the blood vessels, only the sympathetic does. So your blood vessels smooth muscle and they're kept under a partial state of contraction so that that helps to regulate, give some tone. And also if the sympathetic nervous system stimulates them more, then that can cause vasoconstriction. So for example, if we um, increase um, sympathetic innervation and stimulation, right, we increase blood pressure and this would increase GFR. So systemic blood pressure throughout the body can be stimulated by the sympathetic nervous system. So when you are in a state of fight or flight, your blood pressure is gonna go higher, which is why sometimes when you go to the doctors and you're like anxious, why your blood pressure might be high, right? So when they measure your blood pressure, you, they actually kind of want you to be relaxed when they do that. Um, there's also a hormone that also um, causes constriction, vasoconstriction of the blood vessels, and that is norepinephrine. And norepinephrine is actually adrenaline, which is released by your adrenal glands, which sit like right above your kidney, interestingly. So norepinephrine, this is also sometimes referred to as adrenaline, which is produced by the adrenal glands. This causes vasoconstriction. That just means that the diameter of the blood vessels decrease and that actually boosts blood pressure. So vasoconstriction and this increases blood pressure. If your blood pressure drops dramatically, like for example, when you go into vascular shock, norepinephrine could be used to boost the blood pressure so that the blood could get to the brain. So that's important. So norepinephrine released also tends to increase the systemic blood pressure. So that's the sympathetic nervous system, but we also have what is called the renin um, angiotensinogen or angiotensin aldosterone mechanism. 
So that's right um, shown here, this whole series of stuff that is gonna happen. Okay, so let's go to a whiteboard and talk about that. Okay, so we have, let's move down. Okay, so let's talk about the Renin. And let me make sure I get this right. It is Renin angiotensin aldosterone mechanism. Oh, angiotensin. That's an interesting word. Angio means blood vessels and to tense. Um, aldosterone. Mechanism for what? Regulating blood pressure, which is super important in regulating glomerular filtration rate. Okay. So renin is a chemical that is produced by the granular cells in the juxtaglomerular apparatus. So it's actually produced and released by granular cells in the juxtaglomerular, that's the same place the macula dens are, apparatus. in response to low blood pressure. <sighs> okay, renin is an enzyme. And so it is actually going to convert angiotensinogen to angiotensin 2. I don't know why it's tensin 2, but that's the way it is. Now, inogens, you've seen those before. This is inactive form of angiotensin 2, like pepsinogen was the inactive form of pepsin. So enzymes being inactive, hormones, or this chemical being inactive in your blood. You wouldn't want it to be active all the time because it's going to cause vasoconstriction. So the presence of angiotensin II causes vasoconstriction and that like systemically all over the body. And what that's gonna do is that is going to boost your systemic blood pressure. So this is how your kidneys play a role in regulating blood pressure all, all over your body. So vasoconstriction, uh, blood vessels, and this is going to increase systemic blood pressure. Okay. So that was shown in that diagram, kind of an overview. Juxtaglomerular cells. So the blood pressure is too low. There's not enough filtration happening in the kidney. Um, so the granular cells release renin. This causes angiotensinogen to be converted to angiotensin II. This causes the systemic arterioles to constrict. This increases the peripheral resistance in the blood, and this increases systemic blood pressure. Okay. Um, angiotensin II also has another function, which is related to the adrenal gland. So this actually causes the adrenal gland to release aldosterone. So that's the next part of this. So we'll go back to the whiteboard. Okay. Angiotensinogen causes aldosterone. This is a steroid hormone to be released. By the adrenal gland. Adrenal gland. 
Okay, so when it's released by the adrenal gland, it goes into the blood, but it also uh, travels to the kidney and it increases sodium chloride reabsorption in the kidney. What this does is this also increases water reabsorption because where salt goes, water follows. Um, and then what this is gonna do is this is going to increase blood volume because it's increasing the amount of water in your blood. So you're like the total amount of blood in your body increases the blood volume. And what this is gonna do is this is going to increase blood pressure. So this is a mechanism for regulating systemic blood pressure that has to do with um, affecting the amount of water that is reabsorbed from your kidneys. So if you have low blood pressure, you want to reabsorb more water that'll boost your blood pressure. You still have the, also the problem of solutes, but you're also reabsorbing sodium and chloride. So um, that's going to increase your blood pressure. Um, so that was that second part of this diagram right here. Aldosterone targets the kidney tubules, increases sodium reabsorption, water follows. This increases blood volume, and then this increases systemic pressure which affects your kidneys because your kidneys are filtering your blood.